In this video, we're going to do some revision on definitions for D1 decision maths. We have a list of definitions on the right hand side and a list of words on the left hand side. I see this task being done three different ways. If you're very confident, cover up the right hand side and simply write out a definition for each of these and check your answer at the end. If you're quite confident, you can read down this list and then think of a definition that matches each of these. If you're new to the topic or need a little more revision, it's probably easier to start on the right hand side, read them out and then decide which of these it matches up to. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take the statements or the definitions on the right hand side and match them up to these on the left hand side. So let's start. A collection of vertices which, or nodes which are connected by edges or arcs. That's what we call a graph. So in decision maths then we have a graph. That's simply now a collection, a collection of nodes or vertices and arcs or edges. So there are the two different pieces of uh, notational terminology we use. Vertices or nodes, arcs or edges. Now the next one, a graph in which there is a number associated with each edge, its weight. That's what we call a weighted graph or a network. So when you're doing critical path analysis later on and you look at an activity network on each of the arcs, you'll have either a time, a distance or a cost. So we say that that's a weighted graph or a network. So let's lock that one in. Each time now that I'm writing through these, it means that we don't need to consider them again. OK, part of an original graph G. That's what we call a subgraph. So the original graph might have, for example, 10 vertices in it. The subgraph might only connect up three. So a subgraph is part of an original graph G. A graph showing the same information as another, but which is drawn differently. We call these isomorphic graphs. So let's go ahead and put that in place. So an isomorphic graph. So for example, we might have a circular graph. We might have a rectangular graph. We might have some cycle. Essentially, these are showing the same information, they are just drawn differently. A matrix which records the number of direct links between vertices. This is what we call an adjacency matrix. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So this tells me now the direct links between, for example, A and B in now my network. So a matrix which records the number of direct links between vertices. The number of edges incident to a vertex. This is a very important definition. That's what we call the degree, valency or order of a vertex. So if we have odd valency, that means we've got 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on and so forth. If we've got even, then we're going to have now 2, 4, 6 and so on and so forth. When we go on to looking at root inspection, this is really quite important. Especially if you're looking at Eulerian or Eulerian graphs and semi-Eulerian graphs. OK, the next one, a finite sequence of edges such that the end vertex of one edge in the sequence is the start vertex of the next and in which no vertex appears more than once. Now, we have to be careful here. The definition of a path and a walk are very similar. The difference being a path, these vertices can't appear more than once. With a walk, they can. So this one is going to be the path. We'll see later when we find walk that these are incredibly similar. So a path now is a finite sequence of edges uh, where one goes into the next and now no vertex appears more than once. So again, when you're looking at critical path analysis, this is what we're looking at. A graph in which there are R vertices in set X and S vertices in set Y denoted KRS. Now this is quite a tough one. K means that we've got now a complete graph. So with this one, this is going to be a complete bipartite graph. If you're not sure about that, that might be one that you want to come back to. The fact that we've got K means it's complete. The fact that we've got two sets means that it's bipartite. So again, these subtle differences in the definitions, initially uh, you might want to come back to them. A graph in which the edges have direction associated with them. The edges are known as directed edges. So we call this now a digraph or directed edges. So an example of this in real life might be a one-way traffic system. So one-way road network. So let's go ahead and put that on and that's called a digraph. So you'll see little arrows on the edges. An edge that starts and finishes at the same vertex. We call this now a loop. So we might have now A and we might have now a route out of A and back into A and that would be called a loop. 
So let's go ahead and do loops. That's what we want. A matrix which records the weight on the edges. That's what we call a distance matrix. So um, here we can have distance matrix. Now sometimes these are symmetric, sometimes they're not, depending on how many uh, different routes there are between certain vertices. A finite sequence of edges such that the end vertex of one edge in the sequence is the start of the next. Look how close a definition uh, to this one that is. The only difference is we can go back to the same vertex more than once. Therefore, this is a walk. And be absolutely clear on this. You're more likely to be asked the definition of a path than you are a walk. But we do need to know the subtle difference. A closed path, i.e. the end vertex of the last edge, is the start vertex of the first edge. This is what we call a cycle. So that's a cycle or circuit. When we're looking at spanning trees or trees in general, the tree will not now have a cycle in it. So this might start at A, go to B, to C, to D, and back to A. That now is a closed path. The next one, a graph where all vertices are directly or indirectly connected to another. This is what we now call a connected graph. So let's go ahead and do that. That's connected, so that's fairly straightforward, being a connected graph. So we don't have any stray vertices out by themselves that can't be reached. See these as islands that have no root to them. Uh, let's just tidy that up, that looks a bit messy. So that's going to be now a connected graph. Okay, let's look at the next one. A subgraph of a graph which includes all of the vertices of the graph and it's also a tree. This is what we call a spanning tree. So this is going to now go from all of the vertices in the larger graph. So each one is now included in there. A graph in which there are no loops and not more than one edge connecting any pair of vertices. That's what we call a simple graph. So that's a simple graph. So no loops or now on here, no loops or any more than one edge connecting the graph. Uh, sorry, connecting the vertices in the graph. Okay, next one, a connected graph with no cycles. That's working out quite nicely. That's a tree. And that is a definition you are likely to be asked if it comes up anything on trees in an exam paper. Okay, let's look at the next one. A graph consisting of two sets of vertices, X and Y. The edges only join vertices in X to edge uh, into vertices in Y, not vertices within the same set. That's a bipartite graph. So in terms of our learning, if you were new to this, it probably would have been easier coming before complete bipartite graph. So what we've got then is a bipartite graph, and that now has sets X and Y. So when you're doing your matchings, this is what you're going to be looking at. Okay, finally, a graph in which every vertex is directly connected by an edge to each of the vertices in the graph. Uh, or, sorry, if the graph has n vertices, the connected graph is denoted kn. k means it's a complete graph. So we saw k with the bipartite graph, so we can just go ahead and match that up. So let's do that one, and then we will have, let's just make that look a little neater. Let's go through that, uh, and then through that. So there we go. That now is the definition of a complete graph. So if you now want to have a go at putting that back as it was, you're welcome to do so. So hit pause, go back to the beginning and see if you can do it from left to right. Doing it from left to right is a lot harder, especially if you've not got the definitions. But essentially, these are the main ones that you will need to know if you're doing decision maths or, or just general um, decision maths modules for most units. Do check the definitions that you need to learn, but here are the main ones. If I look at these, ones that I might want to include are Eulerian or semi-Eulerian. So when we're looking at an Eulerian graph, all of the vertices have an even degree or even valency. Semi-Eulerian will have a maximum of two that have odd vertices. So that's just one or two more definitions I feel that should really be in here. Uh, so Eulerian and semi-Eulerian graphs. An Eulerian graph is fully traversable. A semi-Eulerian graph is semi-traversable. We can make a semi-Eulerian graph into an Eulerian by considering adding additional arcs. And again, I've covered that in another video. You might also argue that we need minimum spanning tree. 
A minimum spanning tree is simply a spanning tree of lowest weight. So we got spanning tree, which is a subgraph of a graph which includes all the vertices. A minimum spanning tree just means it's the one you can find of lowest weight.